Hi there, I'm Artist Raw Brief and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been rainy, it's dreary. Let's go paint some sunshine. How about a red barn today? Once again, we start with uh, our surface, which is a pre-toned canvas panel today. This is a linen canvas panel. It's an 8 by 10. You can tell I've taken some soft vine charcoal and just sketched out a very basic design. I've got a plan for a, a little barn with um, a road going by, maybe a gravel road. and um, I've got, a, I've got uh, a plan for the sky that's going to be, I think, pretty spectacular if, if it works out the way I want it to. Um, the palette that I'm using, you can see part of it there on your screen. Titanium white, burnt sienna. Uh, Van Dyke Brown, Ultramarine Blue, Prussian Blue, and Sap Green, as well as um, Cadmium uh, Red and Cadmium Yellow. Both are, are deep uh, in tone. Mixing the color for my background trees at the moment. And uh, the, the, the biggest thing here, I want to get a little bit of Prussian Blue in, in this color mixture. This is really the only place in, uh, in anywhere in this painting other than the sky where I'm going to be using Prussian blue. It's such a strong color uh, but as I move further back with these distant trees um, they're going to be um, showing through that little bit of the, the tint of that sky color. I'm just pulling out the basic shape of these background trees. There's there's not a huge secret to this. You sort of just paint them on. Uh, you don't want a lot of detail, obviously. There's going to be very little highlight, if any, uh, within these background trees. They're just so distant. But you can tell there's definitely a tint of that, that Prussian blue. And right now, against this toned canvas, I can see it pretty well. If you were doing this against a white canvas, you could get in some big, big trouble. Uh, at, at this point in the, in the painting because you, you might not be able to judge your color just right. Um, and even even now, even with the toned canvas, it looks a little odd, but once we get the sky in, it's really going to change things. I'm using, uh, of course, a, a bristle brush. This is a Da Vinci Maestro brand brush that I use. I've really gotten my, my brush arsenal. Uh, I obviously have a pretty large one, but out of what I normally use, I probably have a max of maybe five brushes that I typically would pull out, uh, and this is this is kind of my go-to, uh, especially for this size. Now, if I get to working on a larger canvas, I'll definitely pull out a larger brush, but right now this one's perfect. I'm just kind of fluffing up the tops of the trees in the back again not much detail here and those are going to obviously the top of the trees are going to change a little bit once we put the sky in I've talked about this before in other videos um, I know I do things a little bit differently than some artists who would paint the sky in first uh, I do want to mention though that painting the tree line and and a lot of this stuff that's in the mid or or on the ground level stuff uh, before the sky, that's not a hard and fast rule that I go by. It's it's what I typically do, or it's what I typically do right now at, at my stage of, of my painting career. But there are situations where I do want to paint the sky first. Uh, and, and this, had I been doing this painting on a larger canvas, I might have done that. Uh, but we're kind of painting this, We're obviously we're indoors in my studio, but this is going to be kind of a an a la prima uh, style painting. So I'm doing it all at once, and... Uh, I just want to make sure that I, I don't muddy up my canvas too much. But there there would be situations where you would want to paint in the sky first. Um, now I'm darkening up the, or actually I'm, I'm kind of toning down the, the Prussian blue in, in this particular color mixture that I've got for these mid-ground trees. And uh, the, obviously they're going to be a little bit taller than the ones in the back because they're closer. And then I'm adding more sap green and darkening it just slightly by by decreasing the amount of titanium white that's in this mixture. I've got a careful little balance to play. You can tell I've got another large tree sketched in, and that's that's supposed to be a big oak if I if I um, you know execute this painting correctly. But that that large tree is supposed to be out just a little bit from those those um, kind of mid ground darker trees that I just painted in. So I've got to be very subtle in my color shift because they're going to be really close. They're going to be a really close. And maybe the only thing that's going to separate that large tree from those mid-ground trees is, is the highlight. 
So we'll deal with that here in a little bit. I am going ahead and, and mixing up the color for this large tree in the midground, and it's just going to have a bit more sap green and a, a bit more uh, ultramarine blue, and I'm adding also a little bit of um, burnt sienna as well. But it's it's really heavy on the sap green. So this will essentially be, other than the foreground grass, it will be my my darkest element within the painting. Um, uh, of course, I will have some shadows in, for the barn. That could be slightly darker. But Now, for trees of this size, when we're working on a canvas of this size, the technique's uh, not, not different from what we would do on a larger canvas, but... You can't get as much detail, obviously, so it's just it's just dragging out shapes and trying to make sure that I shape this tree in a, in a decent way. Uh, but this thing's far from done at this point. Now, for you beginner painters out there that are painting for the first time with us, uh, this this is a style that that you may have to grow into, especially if you've come from a um, that that traditional wet on wet style that that uh, several um, TV painters. Uh, advocate for uh, and that's how I started learning too so don't feel bad if you're if you're just now joining us that's how I learned as well so nothing wrong with that great way to learn how to paint paint especially for beginners um, but if you're if you're painting with me for the first time and you're kind of seeing this and thinking well this thing's looking horrible there's nothing happening and I'm, I see you have an hour and a half long episode how's that going to work well good art takes time so just just remember that Let's go ahead and establish this this little gravel road that we've got going on. It's kind of leading the eye into the painting. My light source uh, really starts to come into play right now. I know that, that I want the front of my barn really well lit. I want it to be very vibrant, very red. So that means my light's coming from the, the left side. Now, where I'm going to have the sun positioned is really not, not dead noon, but maybe like a... Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be to the left of, of, of this, uh, the center of this painting, but it's still going to be pretty high in the sky. So uh, I'm not going to have a, a huge amount of shadow that's going to be really prominent, but I do want my shadow color on the left side of this path. And I'm just going to kind of drift it into the background as best I can. But the whole right side of this path is going to be kind of lit with um, a much brighter color. See, I'm already changing that slightly. And you notice also I had a big brown swatch that I didn't paint out. I, I love little things like that. I love that's going to leave a lot of nice texture, not only color but nice texture when this when this painting is uh, fully oxidized, fully dry. Let's get used to using those terms too uh, when we're talking about oil painting because it's now when we're talk, when we're dealing with clients. If you're trying to sell art, you know, hey, it's fine to tell a client, well, the painting's not dry yet because to them. You tell them oxidize, that's not going to make any sense. But as artists, we need to know the terms. And for oil paintings, they oxidize. They don't dry. It takes uh, a process of oxidation uh, to, to actually harden the, the, the oils uh, and the pigments. So the path's in at this point. Uh, still not looking like much yet. These are the type of paintings, again, for beginners that I just want to caution you they come together late, and uh, I've talked about this in other videos of mine when it comes to plain air painting. A lot of times, until you're about 70 to 75% done with a, with a piece, you're not going to really be able to tell if it's going to be decent or not. Uh, you just have to learn to trust the process and learn to trust your skills. And if your skills aren't there yet, no big deal. You know, there's a lot of... A lot of uh, there's been a lot of canvases thrown in my trash over the years, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just it's part of the learning process. So now I'm going to need to go ahead and establish the, the deep grass colors in the very far back. And I'm, I'm not, this is kind of an Arkansas scene that I'm painting here. So we do have some hills, but it's not, it's not drastic, especially here in the, the West Gulf Coastal Plain. So I'm not, I'm not going to try to put in a ton of uh, a ton of hills in this particular scene. This is just a nice big open field uh, with these background trees. So I'm going to have a very gradual change from uh, almost a bright yellow to a to a deep green from back um, back grass to foregrass. 
And I, did, I didn't initially, you'll, you'll see here, I don't initially nail this color. I, I had a little bit of trouble getting it spot on. Um, and it took me a few minutes to kind of mix this up and get it where I wanted it. But that's the great thing about oils. You, know, you can just work over them, get them, get them working correctly. Still a little bit soft there. I'm just painting it in. There's no, there's no pushing the brush against the canvas for this, for this size painting or this size canvas. I'm not trying to create blades with, with it. These are too far back to have that kind of detail. When I get closer to the front, I'll start pulling stuff up. But until, until then, I just need to, I just need to get paint on the canvas. I need to, to basically get the underpainting done. Starting with some darker greens, I'm now laying that in. Of course, I'm going to have a bit of a shadow back behind the the, the barn itself, but I, I also want to get just some deeper greens within the mid portion of this painting. Again, if you've if you've never painted like this before, part of the reason I did this basic sketch was just so I would kind of know where I where I need to stop with my paint. Uh, yeah, you could have you could have just painted all this in and then painted the barn later. But what you're going to end up with is this muddy, muddy mixture of stuff that's not quite as accurate as you want it to be. So for me, I've learned instead of painting, you, know, you could paint and let it dry. You could do that. Look at that, almost lost that there. Wow, what a save. <laughs> but what you could do is you could paint the grass in fully. Paint those background trees in fully, even in behind that barn, and then you could come back, let it dry, let it oxidize, and then paint uh, paint the barn itself. What I find that happens with me a lot of times is if I don't plan this out correctly, and I do it that way, I end up with these little unwanted textured lines behind my barn. And really, unless I went in with sandpaper and sanded those out, I, I, I would have that issue. Uh, now, the everyday viewer walking by this painting probably wouldn't notice that, but I will. And, and I don't want it there, so I just I wanted to have my barn pre-planned, and I think it worked out. Now I'm really darkening up this mixture now, adding a, a, a touch of a touch of blue, and I'm just going to and a little bit of Van Dyke brown. Normally I might add a little bit of doxazine purple. I didn't in this painting. I just didn't want any purple tones in it. Uh, probably wouldn't have hurt it though if you wanted to add just a touch of doxazine purple or, or violet or something of that nature. But I didn't do that here. I didn't want the shadow huge either because again my sun is supposed to be f relatively high in the sky. Uh, but I do have a shadow, slight shadow, and uh, that already looks good. So we'll start on the grass now on this left side, just with my light yellow uh, mixture. You know, start start with a bit of a less impact on this yellow. Uh, you can always go back and add brighter yellow at the end. I I try my best not to add my brights, my super brights until the very last step, because if you don't, you're gonna end up you're gonna end up uh, misjudging a color and getting yourself into some some issues there. But everything again is fixable. Nothing's nothing's uh, set. Now a lot of you may have come from from artists who who dabbed on grass or uh, and what I mean by that is pushing the brush into a canvas using like a large brush or something like a one inch or something of that nature or you may have come from an artist who has you layer the grasses on like step like the lightest yellow then the mid mid yellow and then the dark uh, green and then go back with a clean brush and pull those up and you can do that it's it's I've even taught a lot of my classes that I do here in, in locally in South Arkansas. I've taught some classes to do it that way, but I I like this impressionistic realism style better. 
Uh, does it look like a photo? No, it doesn't. Uh, and I, I, I've, I've heard from even people in my classes because I've, I've taught classes and I've had, had some people come up and say, I really like the way you did it better the other way. And that's fine. That's their taste. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of a different taste in how a technique's done. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an impressionistic realism painter, so I, I do like these broad strokes. This, um, it's, it's not impressionism. It's not. it's not. That's not what we're trying to accomplish. But it does have a less than realistic feel to it. You can, you can feel the paintbrushes in the paint. You can see them, and, and I like that about it. Uh, so if you're if you're looking for something that's super realistic, then this probably isn't the style for you. But if you're looking for something that's impressionism, this isn't the style for you either. This is kind of an in between. Really, I I I told someone the other day who was asking me about this and about the differences in the styles, and I said, well, if you put it on a spectrum from like zero percent to a hundred percent, and you said zero is ultra realism and a hundred percent is um, total impressionism. Uh, my paintings reside somewhere between probably fifteen percent to twenty five percent. Does that make sense? Uh, it's it's a it's a very beautiful style of painting, uh, and it, and it really I like it partially because you you get to see you get to see the artist in motion. You get to see that within the brush strokes. All right, let's start with some clouds. I'm taking uh, a titanium white, and I'm mixing it with yellow, okay? Very small amounts of yellow. And believe it or not, I'm adding a touch of Van Dyke brown. Very little at this point, but I'm painting the brightest of the whites in the clouds. Here's one of the few times I'm going to tell you, use your brightest color first. Uh, paint that bright white in. And we're going to, these are kind of summer, spring to summertime clouds that are, that are seen in the south near the Gulf. Here in South Arkansas, we get a lot of those Gulf moisture clouds pushing up. Uh, and um, so I'm not, I'm not taking these clouds with just some bit of randomness. I'm, I'm planning them out. I've added a little bit more yellow with those little strokes there. But basically near the top of my canvas is going to be the clouds that are closest to my perspective. Okay, it's the opposite of where your where your foreground is on the bottom for the ground. What's highest is closest to you. So those are going to be the bigger ones. Those are the big fellas. And then as as we drift to the horizon line, which is very low in this painting, I love that view. Uh, you're, we're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. You can see that touch of yellow I've added. It's really changed it up. I'm going back to a little bit more bright white. This is going to be a big cloud here over here in the corner. This is a great way to paint clouds, folks. I really love it. And you're wondering, well, why didn't he put the blue in first? Why didn't he do that? Well, you'll see why. We don't want to. We don't want to mix those. We don't want to get it. We don't want Prussian blue getting mixed in with this stuff. And it, believe me, it will happen. And I don't want to use a ton of um, linseed oil or thinner or anything like that to to make it stick without mixing. I just want to. I want to make this work. Uh, on its own. This is a point in the painting where you can get very um, distressed and very depressed about how it's turning out. This is this is a point in the painting where a lot of folks are going to walk away. They're going to say, "I've I can't do this." Well, just keep pushing. Just keep going with it. It's gonna it's gonna work out. I was the same way as a beginner painter. I could not, at this point in a painting, I, I just hated it. Could not stand the way it looked. And there's a reason for that. It doesn't look good. It's unfinished. And you've got to let it you gotta let it get finished. You gotta keep working it. And we're just gonna keep working with this titanium white, very slight bit of uh, cad yellow deep. And I've got more. The, this this isn't all of the cloud either. I'm not just going to stick in blue behind these things. There's there's going to be some other colors to get into this. Clouds are very diverse in their color uh, patterns. You're going to have a before we're all said and done. There's going to be some Prussian blue, probably some ultramarine blue, more Van Dyke brown, even some burnt sienna in these things. So just hang out, just hang with it, and don't be afraid to carry a cloud off of the the panel, off of the canvas. It's 
That is super necessary. Now you can also say I do I fan I fan my strokes out a little bit here. They're not all of these lines are not really hard lines. I am scrubbing a little bit uh, as I pull these colors off. Now as I go back further back into this area, my clouds are going to start to get smaller. Uh, they're already getting smaller, but just just hang out with it and and watch how how much smaller I make these. And they're the same size as the big cloud in the top left corner. They're just they're further away. Now kind of sit back, look at it. You know, tell yourself it's okay. It's going to be all right. Cuz right now it looks it looks terrible. It just does. <laughs> yes, an artist can say that about his own work at a certain point. It looks terrible, but it's just not finished. I'm going to carry this cloud a little bit into my barn, and I'm doing that for a reason. I want to make sure that the viewer gets the impression that those clouds are behind this barn. Now, if I just paint clouds around that barn, it's not going to look that way. All right, just kind of putting a little bit of yellow into the mixture again. I'm going to pull out some really small clouds. Yeah, get them close to that tree line. Little bitty fellas. All the way back here in the distance. We're going to put in some dark colors here in a second into some of these clouds that are a little closer to the to the perspective of the the viewer. All right, now it's starting to look a little bit different. You get those background clouds, it's got some depth to it all of a sudden, and that's what these clouds are going to do. They are really, uh, people will look at this and they'll go, oh, it's a red barn painting. Well, yeah, it is, but it's also, it's a big sky red barn painting. This sky is so important. Pulling out some little dots, because clouds have little trailers. They have, and I don't mean, you know, 18 wheeler trailers. I mean, they have little little things that follow them. You know, I've gone back and I've darkened up the mixture a little bit with uh, some Van Dyke brown, a little bit of a hair of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and this is kind of a, a second color of three that's going to go into these clouds. So I'm just I'm painting the underside of these clouds. Of course, when light hits a cloud, it, it you know, of course, it turns this bright, brilliant white. But if you if you watch during the spring and summertime, the bottom even even on the sunniest of days, the bottoms of clouds are darker. Uh, so that's what we're we're they're that dark gray almost, and that's what color we're trying to achieve. It's in fact it's almost the exact same color as the panel that we've got behind. It's a not as a little bit less on the brown side, but all of these close up, the underneaths of them need to be this this color here. You can see I'm not just covering up all of my white. I'm, I'm extending these clouds. They're getting bigger. So I started off in the white a little bit there. And that's, this is a point where you can reshape them. You can dictate what's going on within the scene. I heard an artist not too long ago in another YouTube video that said that the, uh, and I won't tell you who it is, because I, I just disagree with them, and it's it's not, you know, if their method works, their method works, but I heard them say that, you know, the canvas speaks to them. The canvas, that they really don't make any decisions that they, and this, and this, this was, uh, I won't even tell you what type of artist it was, whether it be landscape, uh, modern, uh, portrait, doesn't matter what it was, I just, I just want you guys to hear what they said, and, and let me tell you why I disagree with them. Um, they, they mentioned that the canvas speaks to them and that they really just take what the canvas gives them and they, they don't really take much credit for what the canvas gives. And I, I don't know, maybe that's a marketing thing for some artists. For me though, that's not how I want my stuff to be. That canvas is my world and I command it. Um, uh, it, it's, it doesn't tell me what to do. You know, I, I, I attack it to a certain extent. Now I'm, I don't mean that in a, in a, in a rough way. I just mean that canvas 
is going to take whatever orders I give it with the brush and paint. Um, you know, there there are some things within within the development of a painting. Sometimes I guess I can see that where uh, a painting can can give you something by accident. But even that is just a good artist knowing what to to do by instinct and by practice, which is you know uh, developed over time. But for me, I, you know, if you're if you're one of my students, I'm gonna I'm just gonna tell you that your your canvas is your world. You you tell it what to do. You make it happen. It's up to you. And there's my little art tangent for the day. <laughs> I don't have many of those. Not normally. Again, still right now, it, it's still not looking like much. It's going to take some time. We've got to build this thing. Every little step is just another, another, another brush stroke closer to the end of this painting. I told you guys before, though, enjoy the process. Even though right now, it's 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 at this point in, in this particular painting, it's hard to get it and hard to want to see it. Just enjoy enjoy the sheer art of, or the sheer the sheer joy of painting. Again, using the right kind of back corners of these paintings, of these clouds, to get, to get this color right. The underneaths. Slightly darker gray mixture that I was using. You guys can see how I've kind of got three different, three, well, really four different, if you count the brightest of whites. Bright whites, kind of yellowy whites, mid grays, and then these dark grays that we're putting on now. So that's what I was going into these clouds. And I'm, I know I, I held my, my palette up earlier in the process. I, I wish I could have done that more. Uh, I've got my little table over here, and I just, I, I, for some reason or another, set it down to just concentrate on what I was doing. So uh, sorry you guys are not getting to see what's going on on my palette. I, I'm working, I'm trying to get a setup where you guys can see what I'm doing on the, on the palette itself. Now that we've got the clouds in for the most part, it's time to start mixing up our true blue sky color. This is going to be very important that we get the, the tones correct. I'm actually going to start this one from the bottom. And the reason I'm, I'm starting from the bottom on this sky, uh, and I, no I might not normally do this, but just for this one, I want to make sure that I get the, the, the sky color enough apart from the, the bottom clouds that the clouds still stand out, yet... I want to make sure that it's light enough that I that I that I can gradually move up into this this darker Prussian blue color that I'm using. And I'm I'm using a little bit of yellow in here as well, but it's for the for the bulk of it, it's titanium white, um, a little bit of Van Dyke brown that's kind of left over from where I was painting on the clouds uh, that's, that was still in my brush. So I've kind of mixed that into into this, and it's almost dissipated, but it's still there. Uh, it kind of grays it, and then this Prussian blue mixture starting in this bottom right hand corner and I'm just gonna start laying in some some sky color you can tell right now this is very light as that horizon line is gonna be lighter than the top much lighter than the top and some of these background clouds are gonna almost wash out they're almost gonna blend into this but that's not a problem that's that's normal that's the horizon gets hazier I'm also got to be careful not to pick up too much green into my trees, but uh, it is good to blend blend them in. Uh, these far background trees are supposed to be a little bit blended. Painting up next to my barn. I'll stick with this same color for basically a full inch to an inch and a half on the the bottom part of this this sky. I'm going to take it in about three to four stages of, of, of light to darker colors of blue. Once again, just we're using Prussian blue for this. Prussian blue and titanium white. I had some leftover yellow and leftover Van Dyke brown in my brush when I first started mixing it up. Very light amount amounts of those though. And the reason I'm telling you that is a lot of you out there I know, just from experience of teaching my students, 
a lot of you out there are brush cleaners, so you go back and you clean your brush every time. Hey, nothing wrong with that in the world, but I just want you to know that if you clean your brush between doing the clouds and doing this, you're going to get a little bit slightly different color than what I'm getting, simply for, simply for the fact that you've taken out that yellow and that bit of Van Dyke brown that was in your brush. Time to start working around this large tree on the left side. And I kind of go back to the palette more often at this point simply because I'm pulling up a little bit of the green from the edge of that, that tree. And if I, if I do that too much, I'm going to end up with green out into my, the thick of my sky and I don't need that. So I just, I'm very careful, but when I do pick up green, I don't clean the brush, but I go back to my palette and just pick up more color. And as I do that, it just dissipates that sap green. Again, we're working on an 8x10 canvas uh, panel, linen panel, so there's not a lot of paint on the surface yet. There's just, it's, it's a relatively thin layer. It's, I'm not building up a lot of goo. Some of you may be frustrated by the slow process of this style of painting. And I'll admit, I even at times get a little anxious, but it's worth it in the end if you get the right stuff and it, and it, looks, and it looks good. I'm just going to continue with the same color throughout these, this bottom inch to an inch and a half of the clouds. It's not too difficult to do. Just, just stay close to your clouds. They're not done yet. So when you're painting through here, because I'm not going to give you directions on every little bit of this, but I just kind of watch the brush strokes. And uh, if your clouds' edges do not look right to you yet, no worries, we've got a little secret step we're going to take for that. We're going to actually be introducing you guys to a brush that I've never actually used on this show before, on this channel. But it's one that I use a lot in a lot of my other professional pieces, uh, which again, I'm, I'm going to try to start recording almost all of my work so that you guys can see everything I'm doing. Unless it's a commissioned piece, and then sometimes for those kinds, I, I have to I have to hold off until the person. A lot of times, commissioned pieces are gifts, so I don't like to post that kind of stuff publicly until the person's received their present. But anything I'm doing on my own, professional or or just for the channel, I'm going to try to record for you guys at home. You notice I've slightly darkened this this mixture with a little bit of Prussian blue. Now I went back a little wider there to go around the the uh, barn. You also notice I've gone inside the lines of my barn. Not a big deal, just, just don't get deep, deep into the middle of it. Okay, for the next few moments, I'm going to just, I'm going to kind of be quiet. I'm not going to narrate the next few minutes. I am going to watch you, uh, let you guys watch me paint this in real time. But notice the slight um, changes of tone as I do impart more and introduce more Prussian blue into this, this mixture. So just watch that as I move up to the top of this canvas panel.
This is the first point that a lot of you are going to go, wow, that's starting to come together. That's really looking pretty cool. And I agree with you. This is this is where it, where it starts to happen. You get these darker, this brighter tone of Prussian blue, and it just lights up. It brings that little ray of sunshine into your life. And look at that top right cloud. That that little subtle change from white to dark suddenly with the Prussian blue in there looks unbelievable. I love it. Can't get enough of that cloud. Man, I love this thing already. It's so pretty. I maybe, you know, when I go back and when I come back now and I'm recording the narration, I think I went into that cloud a little bit much. I should have probably left it a little thicker. But no worries, it still looks good. Are we ready to introduce the secret brush? I hope you guys are. Uh, this is a point in the painting where the clouds look good, but they can use a little bit of improvement. And here is, or coming soon, is the the game changer on this, this sky. And it's going to be a subtle change. I don't want you to think it's just going to pop out. But the brush I'm now using is, is a blender brush. But it is a pure badger fur, or pure badger hair blender. I've got two of them right now. I may add some more soon, but this is the largest one that I've got. The others come in more like a size three of a of almost a a, a flat brush. Uh, this one's a a really large, um, really large brush. Not a long handle brush, but it is a a large brush. And I'm just fanning out the edges and blending a little bit on the between these grays and that brightest white. I'm working from the bottom to the top so that the the um, the Prussian blue doesn't mix too much into my white. And I'm just working these edges, just slightly bl blending them and slightly pulling out a little bit of color. Very light touch here. And as this thing kind of picks up paint, I will go back and clean it. Because I just don't want to mix that in to my whites too much. Now I'm taking my small, this is a smaller badger brush. And it's kind of harder to work. The the Remarkably, the, the smaller the brush for me, the harder it is. Uh, and the reason you see right there, I went ahead and decided, nope, not using that. The reason I did that is that the smaller badger brush, the hairs are more confined to a small space. So you you end up, instead of blending, you end up just, it's almost like a bristle uh, brush because of the the tightness of the the hairs at the end but you get this this large brush and it's so fluffy and so light that it can just it can do wonders for you and i believe that is a da vinci brand br brush as well if i remember correctly I, i've come to where i really like da vinci brand brushes they're just high quality stuff and they're not bad priced. They're not. We're not badly priced, and
going back in with some bright um, titanium white along with a little a little touch of cad yellow deep no gray in this though there's there's no van dyke brown in it and i'm just i'm i'm re lightening a little bit of these clouds and i'm also going to pull out these little guys these little bitty strokes even that little dab added so much. I hope you guys noticed that. If not, please go back and watch it again. That little bitty bit of color added so much to that one cloud. It's the little things that add up. Please don't neglect the small uh, items within a painting. All right, let's start working on this barn. We're going to start off with a cad red deep mixture along with burnt sienna, which burnt sienna is going to make up the bulk of this. We're also adding a little bit of ultramarine blue. Just look at the diversity of colors already on this, this canvas with just minimal, minimal uh, colors on the palette. I'm using that same brush that I've used most of the time. I think that's number three, bristle. could be a four but I think it's a number three and it's a Da Vinci Maestro I believe I bought that from dickblick.com if I remember correctly I'm not sponsored by Da Vinci or Dick Blick at least at the time of this this video being made just to be clear so that's my shadow side of the barn that, that establishes where I'm going with the brightness of the front. I'm still going to start off with a darker mixture on the front. It's not going to be super, super, super red yet. I know I'm putting that on and you're going, oh, that's super red. That's not as red as what I'm going to go with later. It's still a darker mixture. And I'm just getting the basic shape of this barn in. I can refine the roof later. Okay, the majority of this barn is now painted in. Now it's just a matter of starting to detail it. 
finishing up a bit of the red there, leaving a small little opening for a door. I'll probably make that door much larger than even what it looks like it will be there. Now this next part that I'm going to do is actually establishing the roof lines. I'm using a mixture of white and ultramarine blue, maybe a few other colors like yellow mixed into this. I'm using a Da Vinci Maestro uh, brush. It's a larger brush, but it, it does have a kind of a, uh, a slanted shape to it at, at the end. So it's, I would almost call it a little chisel brush. Uh, there, there is a more specific name for it that I'm, my mind's slipping me now at the moment. Hey, if you know it leave it in the comments so folks can figure it out or I'll post it later once I get back to my studio and I'll check that out and make sure I know what I'm talking about before I say it but I I kind of call it my little chisel brush because I'm able to get into corners and just make little straight lines like this with it you could use a palette knife for this but palette knives for me tend to leave this really odd circular little texture once you pull the knife back off of the of the canvas and you have to put so much paint on sometimes with a palette knife maybe I'm just not that good with the palette knife maybe maybe some of you out there are much better with it and hey if you are man props to you because I I use palette knives I use them a lot for clouds uh, which I haven't done an episode yet with that but you can also see with this brush how easy it is just to lay on that that roof almost completely without having to my little flat brush that I've got, I couldn't get into the corners that well, but with this one, it's so it's such a sharp edge that I can get into corners and get the entire little thing painted, even on a small scale painting like this with relative ease. We do need a door. We need a door on this and some windows on this, this barn, which is really going to bring this painting to life all of a sudden because this is the last bit of canvas that we need to fully cover. I'm going to my liner brush, uh, and I'll also try to uh, post in the comments section the type of liner brush that I'm using. And maybe we'll, we'll do another video uh, on, uh, well, I'll try to do this pretty soon, another video on exactly what brushes I, I use for the most part but I'm using my little liner brush and just establishing this pretty well with I've thinned down this paint a little bit it's a mixture of ultramarine blue Van Dyke brown a little burnt sienna so it's just a muddy mixture it's not it's not stark black though that's the important thing to remember this isn't a stark black color I'm also going to use this to put in not only the windows, but the shadow color underneath the, the eave of the roof. I decided to put a little door on that left side. Now, I'm, I'm not a farmer, okay? Let me just throw that out there. Uh, this barn may not be perfectly accurate in terms of what a, you know, a little almost a little shed shape on the the uh, left side or where we're looking at the left side of that barn um, they may not have doors like that very often I have no idea I just thought it would look kinda cool so I am gonna also frame up the corner just a little bit so you guys can can see that uh, you know I'm gonna do the same thing on this right side some windows are going in now but as a painter it's not always important to be um, architecturally accurate 
but it, it's just important to make it look good. Now for the shadows under the, the E, and this is going to really make this roof stand out. you got to be careful when it comes to the right side of the roof. You'll see what I'm talking about in a few moments, but I'm also taking this time. I got my roof a little large in a couple of places, so I'm just going back over it with this dark color and, and kind of thinning that line out a little bit. Yeah, that's already looking really cool. And we're going to have that same mixture underneath over here on this right side of the roof. You can tell that kind of gives that impression of the light coming from the upper left part of the perspective. The last step on this tree over here, or actually the second to last step, because we do have to put in a trunk, but we've got to highlight this. We're just using kind of a yellowy mixture, yellowy green, to, to highlight this tree. It's not going to have a lot of detail to it. We're just trying to give the impression of some, some light. It's, it's pretty close to where I want it right now, but the tops of it and then the left side near the front is going to have light with where the light's coming from. But we don't want to get rid of all of our dark green, so just be careful about that. I've got some canvas there that needed a little bit of a cover. Again, I'm, I've got a plan. I am going to have a trunk and a, maybe a couple of big limbs. That tree is standing out further. There's actually some mid-ground trees behind it. So the, the trunk's going to come into the grassy area. I, I already love how this painting is turning out, though. We need a trunk, so let's get that in there at this point. I'm using my liner brush to do this. On a larger canvas, we would probably use a larger brush, maybe that number three or an even up to a number six. Could even use a, a large number 10 if you were on a really, really, really big canvas. But on this one, we, a little liner brush will do just fine. You can tell, I, I kind of, I've preached at you guys before about trying to build some balance, but this was kind of the, a night where I didn't feel like I had it too well. And I'm using such a small canvas that I'm, and I'm painting all the Prima, so I, I decided to kind of rest my pinky on my, my easel. That just gives me that little bit of balance that I need. Bringing that trunk down into the grass. I'm, not, I'm trying to make sure that this, this tree trunk is not absolutely parallel to the left side of the, of the canvas either. I want it to have a little bit of a lean to it or curve. Not drastic, but enough that it's, it's not perfect. going to move back to my chisel brush. I've cleaned it 
and I'm going to get a little bit of a lighter red mixture. I'm going to do about two more mixtures of red on this barn and I'm just going to pull down. I probably should have waited on my doors but I didn't so I'm just going to have to paint around those and I'm just laying a slightly lighter mixture of red. This is still going to show the dark red through it and I'm painting wet into wet here so it's going to but it just creates a nice little look of weathered uh, weathered wood. Still a well-kept barn. It's not it's not one that's falling in or anything like that. But it also helps this to stand out from the shadow side of the barn. You see me struggling a little there to try to figure out how best to hold that brush. Now we're going to take this red mixture up a notch in brightness once again. And here we go. And see that color there is going to be much brighter. Kind of touching it. I'm not worried about getting it perfectly covered. I'm just going for that weathered look. You have to be careful, but not too careful in situations like this. If you're a beginner, this is a spot where you could you could find yourself with an issue. If not, if you even if you're a beginner, uh, just try to have confidence about yourself and realize that it may not turn out perfect your first time, but hang in there with it. All of a sudden that front side really stands out from the shadow side of the barn. As I kind of step away or sit back for a second and clean my brushes, look at the painting a little bit more, I notice I, I need to darken uh, the top middle of the roof of the barn needs to have a darker shadow. So I'm taking my liner brush again with my dark shadow mixture and I'm just going to paint in not a triangle shape but it certainly is, well, I guess it is a triangle shape. <laughs> the way I put that in, it ends up being one. Uh, and that, that just kind of makes it look like I've got the roof hanging over the barn just a little bit more at the top, which I think, I don't know if that's exactly how barns are built, but I think I've seen that before. So to me, it looked right. Now I take a step back, look at it, try to evaluate it, and see what else I need to add. After I looked at it for a few minutes, I decided I wanted to play around with the background grass. So I'm just adding some little dots of a little bit of dark, um, dark and burnt sienna. Probably no one will ever have any idea what these are, but I'm trying to paint the impression of some cows in the backfield. But they are simply little dots. They're not going to have any detail to them. They're just very small little, little dots of color. And again, nobody will probably ever know what they are. All right, so then after that, I, I, I looked around for a few minutes, and I thought the, the barn looked like it was too secluded, so it needed a little path going into the, the gravel road, because if you're going to pull a truck or a tractor or something in, you need to have a little path that um, goes into that main door. So I painted that, and then I kind of carried that little dirt. It's almost like this farmer's carried a little bit of dirt or worn down a path to his barn from the gravel road itself. So just used my liner brush to do, to do that with a dark mixture of uh, Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Sienna uh, with a little titanium white. So I'm, I'm kind of evaluating it again. And when I filmed this, I, t I took about 30 minutes in between this step and the next just because I wasn't exactly sure what else I wanted to do to the painting. It's a lot of times we'll get to this point and we go, okay, it looks good, and then we just stop. 
and I thought there was some some more things needed I did go ahead and paint one other thing in here and this was a this will be a bit of a risk for some of you to, to want to do this but it's not a big 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 deal um, I'm actually painting in at this point I'm painting in a little water well just to the right side of the barn I'm using just a dark mixture for this ended up being a little too dark so I did go back and put on some highlights but you gotta have access to water and I just thought well old timey well might be kinda cool to put in here I urge you guys at home to customize these paintings too I mean you're well, more than welcome to try to paint these along with me but um, you know try to add a truck or something like that at some point might be kind of cool I looked at it for around 30 minutes and decided it needs something needed something else so I'm gonna add um, a little fence obviously if, you, if you've got cows you need a fence so I'm just taking a dark mixture now and I'm going to start it off, it's almost going to be like this little fence is, is blocking off the barn entrance from the cows. Now, I don't, again, I'm not a farmer. I don't have a clue why any farmer would do this. This is purely from an artistic standpoint, So, because I, I know I'll have some folks that'll uh, eventually see this that'll probably say, well, you wouldn't have that there. Well, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a farmer. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a cattle owner, so I don't have any idea why this would be, but I just think it needs a fence. I'm doing a basic little post fence. Now these back lines are going to be so light that it's going to be pretty delicate and hard for you to see them uh, on camera. And I do apologize for that. Maybe you can get to see them at the uh, for the final reveal at the end of this episode, which stick with me. That's not far away. You start to make out some of these lines now, and I'm going to bring these around on both uh, on all on the right side of this this road is where this fence is going to go. Just continually painting little posts and I'll come back and highlight the, the most forward of these posts. And then I'll also probably add some barbed wire which is super easy to do by the way.
While I've got this dark mixture, I think the shadow on the right side of this barn, the shadow side of this barn needs to be darker and a little bit larger to make it stand out. And just that little line there, look at the difference that that just made. Bam. Bam. It looks awesome. Love that. Just going to add a few more highlights here to the road, a little path to the barn just to help these stand out just a bit. Again, you're going to have rocks within all this dirt that's going to shimmer with a little bit of sunlight. This is such a bright day. Don't be afraid to put in a big line of light just like that. That's really pretty. Again, you're kind of guiding the eyes of the viewer into the painting. So they, they drift through the center with that bright light and the red barn and then and then as they go into the background, they're kind of lit into this beautiful big sky. And again, the sky here for me is my focal point. And I love that little highlight on that fence. Look at how that just made that stand out. I'm being careful to put these on the left side. As my color waters down or gets picks up a little color, I'll go back and lighten this color up. But uh, yeah, the sky is kind of the focal point. The, it's easy to say that the barn is, and maybe the barn is, but... Um, they kind of they share the spotlight together, this sky and that barn. Okay, that's going to about do it for this painting. I'm going to finish up a few small little tiny details here. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure if you uh, are enjoying my content, please hit that subscribe button. Share this with all of your friends. Please do that. Hit the like button as well. Uh, if you do subscribe, hit that bell icon so you get notified anytime I upload new content. Be sure to check out my vlog. Of course, I'm just doing a behind the scenes of kind of what it's like to be an artist, which is essentially just kind of my daily life. Uh, I do upload that, try to upload that daily, but that's, that's not always the case. Um, but we're going to have more painting episodes coming, so be sure to subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Keep painting. God bless.